Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Lauren Has No Self Control, so she got more books, yay! Before we get started, I have a mini announcement that I have joined Snapchat because, you know, I'm so old and I just want to pretend like I'm young. So if you want to follow me and see what I'm doing, my username is Lauren Eamy and oh, hey, if you're not following me on Twitter and Instagram already, you can do that as well. They're at Lauren Whitehead on Twitter and Lauren Eamy as well on Instagram, so... But you're all really here for the books, so let's end that self-promotion and get down into it. First up we have a beautiful book which I bought a while ago actually and I think I forgot to show it in my most recent haul because it's been on my shelf because it's just so gorgeous and that is Eleanor by Jason Gurley. I saw this on Amy's channel Shout Amy who I will link in the description box below and I think this book was on her top reads of like 2016 so far, so far which is amazing praise and also have you seen this cover? It is just it is so gorgeous. It's like this beautiful um, matte paper and Eleanor and Jason Gelly are kind of raised um, here. You can kind of feel them. And it's just this beautiful painting. And I was just completely sold on that, basically. This is about three generations of the same family and how the actions of older generations kind of ripple down through the years and affect the younger ones. So it sounds really interesting. It comes really highly recommended. And I just, I just love it. I, I might be in love with this book. Although I'm pretty annoyed because somebody put a sticker on it um, when it was in the shop. So I've ripped the sticker off and um, and ruined it. So it's not as beautiful as it could be, but you know, I still love it though. The next book I got is really quite interesting. I was contacted by Gagoslav Publications, which is a publisher who translate into English works from Russia and other Slavic nations. And they asked me if I was interested in being sent any of their books. And I was like, sure, because I really like reading translated fiction and also being introduced to authors that probably wouldn't have been on my radar otherwise. And so I asked for Nidich. <laughs> I don't know, Nedic, I don't know how you pronounce that, um, by Maria Rybakova. And this is about um, a guy called Nikolai Nedic, who was the first person to translate the Iliad into Russian. But what is really interesting about this book is it's actually written in verse and in um, cantos in the way that the Iliad is. Um, but it's about this this guy's life. So it just sounded really, really interesting to me. I've not read anything by Maria Rybakova. Um, so just really, really intrigued by this one. I was also sent a couple of other books from publishers this month. The first one came from Faber, and that is Known and Strange Things by Teju Cole, which is a collection of his essays. Teju Cole is the author of Open City, which I have downloaded on my Kindle, haven't read yet, but he's kind of an award-winning author. I've heard really good things about him. And these are just some essays kind of on a lot of things. It says um, on politics, photography, travel, history, and literature. And I'm just really interested to get an insight. I like when authors of fiction also write non-fiction or also write essays. I think you get an interesting insight into their life. So really looking forward to this one. And the second thing that I got sent was from Granta, and that is Paulina and Fran, which I originally saw on Anna James's channel, A Case for Books, which is a beautiful channel. If you are not already subscribed, I will link that below. And this is just about two friends, Paulina and Fran. I think one of them is really loud and the other one is quite Quite quiet, they leave school, they go to art school, and then once they enter that world of young adulthood, their friendship starts getting strained. And it comes really highly recommended. Um, it's out now, I think, and it just sounds really fun and witty and just something a little bit different. The next book I'm going to show is actually on loan to me, um, but I'm really excited to read it, so I wanted to show it to you. And that's Fox Low by Eleanor Wasserberg, and this was lent to me by Jean from Bookish Thoughts. I heard her review of it. I think I've seen it on a couple of people's channels, actually. and. I was about to buy it so she came down to London the other weekend and brought it with her which is very kind and it's about people growing up in a kind of cult in a house and it just sounds really cool and sort of a really I was going to say fun read obviously not that fun if it's about a cult but probably something that's quite readable like an easy read I guess if you have not seen the long list for the Man Booker Prize 2016 has just been announced and I wasn't kind of that fussed about the prize this year I was like you know I read them all last year I'm pretty happy to just take a back seat but then when the long list got announced I was thinking 
oh, these actually sound really interesting. So I kind of immediately bought a couple of them. I had a look down the list, decided which ones I was most interested in. And one of them I downloaded on my Kindle, which is The Many by Will Menua. And I have already read that and talked about that in my wrap up last week, which I will link if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on that. And the other thing I bought was Hot Milk by Deborah Levy. Deborah Levy was shortlisted for the Man Booker a few years ago for her book, Swimming Home, which I really enjoyed. So I'm really pleased for her that she's been long listed again. And I just really enjoy her writing so I'm I'm really happy to get this one. This is about a mother and a daughter and the daughter's legs have stopped working and so they go to Spain um, I guess to try and work out what's going on but it sounds like it's one of those kind of epiphany inducing journeys and they go to the coast and it's all beautiful and they have a little bit of a awakening about their relationship and stuff so it just sounds really cool. Her books always seem to be about bigger aspects than what they are on the surface. So really looking to reading some more of her work. And then the last book that I bought was the next book in Elena Ferrante's Neapolitan book series. And uh, this is the story of the new name. I read My Brilliant Friend, which is the first book, uh, a couple of months ago now and I've read all of her standalone ones so I thought let's continue on with the series. This is the story of two women's friendship throughout the ages and my brilliant friend is focusing on them being children into just early adulthood and I guess this must be the next stage. There's four books in total and this was just like a really nice read. There's lots and lots of characters, there's lots of complex things going on but it's just very normal. There's not loads of revelations or, or something going on it's just a very two normal people's lives so I didn't want to leave too big a gap between the books because one there's a lot of characters in here and I didn't want to forget what was going on but also because it's about a whole lifetime essentially I think you need to kind of just take it as almost one massive big long book and just approach it as a really long slow read and an unfolding of this relationship um, so I wanted to just get back into those characters lives and this is actually quite a long book this is much longer than my brilliant friend and I've got two more books after this to read um, so yeah so I'm hoping now that I'm going on to the second book because I enjoyed my brilliant friend but I didn't like love it so I'm hoping getting into the second one will just like really entrench me in this series. So they're my most recent additions to my collection. Let me know if you've read any of these books and whether you liked them, whether you disliked them, which book you think I should read first. I always like hearing recommendations from you. If you're new, you can subscribe for more videos such as these, you lucky person, and I will see you next time. Bye. But then thankfully the most recent two books that I've read I absolutely adored and I read a little bit of poetry. I read Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Max Porter and Crow by Ted Hughes. I read these very close together because grief is sort of a riff on Crow or, or this collection.